He stood at the gate with a kitchen knife saying he's going to stab police. Crime is on the rise. Armed with a axe and a machete. Trying to break into the houses. But come at the hour. More unit, more unit. Come at the interceptors. Get on the floor! Out and running, out and running. We're riding with West Yorkshire's... What's up? Alongside their pursuit drivers... Contact, contact, standby. On target with their firearms unit... In the air with their eye in the sky. Off and running, off and running. This is the front line in the fight against... Get on the floor! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! This is Police Interceptors. It's another day in paradise. Coming up... Yeah, I'm going to jump it out of the car with the drugs. A curb jumping courser... Them there, there. ...gets Big H on the run. Power power Give me the now! Give me the arms now! A rude awakening for a wanted man... This is the end, please! Do it yourself! Yeah, and... <laughs> yeah. Many hands make light work. Protect all you. To do me, yeah? The secret weapon in the battle to keep villains off our roads is the Proactive Intercept, or PIT Team. Armed with high-powered unmarked beamers, they hunt in packs and use key intel to launch preemptive strikes on bad guys. A lot of our assets are visible and marked up police vehicles, but we do have covert vehicles as well. There's quite a few of us out tonight. No, there's, um... We've got six cars out tonight. Six cars, yeah. Team. yeah. Two in each car. Yeah. Plenty of bodies. Strength in numbers, eh? It is. And, uh, if we stop a car, there's four people in a car, we can just overcome them, can't we? You know, no, hands on deck and we've got everybody detained. It's rush hour. And the pit team's in pursuit of a Vauxhall Corsa that's failed to stop. Yeah, going there, took it out of the car, with the jug. A cloud of white powder chucked out of the window could explain why. Odds are it's not self raising. Speed is currently 6 0, just gone onto the uh, roundabout, stand by. The little Corsa is no match for the cop's beamer. But this lad's feeling adventurous. The runaway is wreaking all sorts of havoc. And after hanging a sharp left, he's met with a frosty reception. Have a go, hero, who's clearly no softy. The biggest obstacle now is the rush hour traffic. Not a problem for the courser, who risks it all with a reckless move. Just approaching the uh, junction standby. The left, the left. The suspect salutes the for keeping up. but he needs both hands to pull off his next trick. Before finally picking a lane. Yeah, of course we've got a vehicle. Faced with a wall of traffic, he plays chicken with an oncoming car. And his luck nearly runs out. Just approach it, Tommy Watts Junction, just stand by. The pursuit driver is T-Pack trained, but rather than box the courser in, he's got another idea. Get some, see if we've got some stinger tights in there. Too far, we are looking for stinger tights. He calls the jury, putting out the shout for a stinger team 
to take out the tyres of the runaway Corsa. Direct weapon to old lay, back to Tommy Ross. I don't know where that is. Out on the ring road, pit legends Stefan Leischuk and Harry Big H Jeffrey have got the tools and the talent. Good luck, good luck, good luck. Okay, okay. All they need is a spot to strike with the stinger. And throw the bed of spikes across the roundabout. The course's tyres will be mincemeat. India 2-3, we've got uh, Stinger at roundabout with Harvester Pub. The pursuit is just half a mile away. You're coming towards? Yeah, it's coming this way. Yeah, it's just continuing uh, straight on uh, towards that uh, location. Speed is 7-0. Uh, straight on, and it's game over. It's gone wrong way. Um... Other way, other way. The course has gone the wrong way up a slip road and avoided the stinger. But the pit pursuit driver still has him banging his sights. Oh, there he goes. And now the suspects run into yet more cop cars. The net is closing in and he's hurtling towards a roundabout that's thick with traffic. Going there, out of the car with the drugs. In South Leeds, a curb jumping Corsa has led interceptors on a wild and reckless rush hour pursuit. He's driven full tilt towards a traffic jam. And this time, there's no way through. It's, it's, uh, it's got a crash crash. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. One last shot at Demolition Derby and he's bailed out. And interceptors are straight after him. And when they think the coast is clear, one, two, three, four passengers swiftly disappear, but for how long? Providing backup to catch them, pit units and Harry. Four outstanding there. Four outstanding down there. Right. Yellow t shirt. Yellow t shirt and girls. Yeah. We've just been pointing in direction at four runners by Paul. After their failed stinger attempt, there, there, there. they've got the bit between their teeth. Get a good, get a good get a good Give me the wire now. Give me the hands now. Hand down your back. Get on that wall and do your move. Hand down your back. You walked up, mate. Suspicious theft of motor vehicle. Yellow T-shirt versus Big H. No contest. The game's up for the other passengers too. So why were this lot on the run? Who, who, who robs a 1.2 horse, sir? Jesus Christ. I'm surprised what people steal. Yeah, I, 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 I can understand what you're saying, but Jesus Christ. Well, same logic. If it, weren't, if it were just insurance, I'd already take a chase. Uh, you asked the driver? I want a driver. <laughs> he wasn't behind the wheel, but he is wanted for breaching a court order. Though he's more worried about a wee problem with his trousers. I went back in car as well, man. I, I, I'm a glass of strongbow with me. That's what I, that, I pissed myself. Glass of strongbow, man. <laughs> Cops have the driver further up the road and confirm the car isn't stolen. However, they've discovered the driver has no insurance and no license. Oh, what do you think of that guy's driving? Uh, tremendous, wasn't it? <laughs> Chuckles might find it funny, but it's no laughing matter for the cops. Right. Take this lad. Stupid risks. It's rush hour, Friday tea time. And the drive like absolute idiots. Get they'll, they'll go over grass verges, they go the wrong side of carriage, or wrong way around roundabout. Putting all these innocent members of public's lives uh, at risk. All for the sake of something as stupid as no insurance or no license. Dog. Absolute idiots they are. The driver was convicted of dangerous driving. He received a 14 month prison sentence and was disqualified from driving for 19 months. The passenger who couldn't hold his strongbow got a further stain on his character, a three-day extension to his existing community order. 
it's not worth the risk. If the blue lights come on, it's simple. The message is simple. Stop. Drug driving is the bane of the interceptors. Last year, a million Brits admitted getting behind the wheel whilst under the influence. And one in six drivers killed on our roads have illegal drugs in their system. And their chief weapon in the war on drug drivers... Can you just lean forward for me so I can get some saliva? I need to get it from the tongue and sides of your mouth, all right? So... ..is a plastic lollipop that has them licked. There's a positive line there. Drug wipe's fantastic. It's nice and simple. Just need a bit of saliva from you at the side of the road. and gives us a reading as to whether there's uh, cannabis or cocaine in that system. They are efficient and we are using a lot more of them. They're becoming another effective tool in, in getting dangerous people off the road. It's 11.30 on Friday night. Party time for some. But interceptors Andy Howarth and Bob Hoyle have to do. But there's no permitted drivers or anything found. A fiesta with four lads inside has caught their eye. It's not registered to say to insure the dress or anything. Let's see what it is, isn't it? They decide it's worth a pull. Hello, mate. Come and join us. Bring your ID if you've got some here. The driver seems relaxed and happy to step into bus. Hello. All right, buddy. How are you doing, you right? Yeah, not too bad. Is it your car, mate? It's my boss's car. Thank you. Who do you work for? Uh, my brother. Have you got some ID with you? I've got my bank card with me, buddy, if that helps. Andy doesn't need a sixth sense to crack this one. Who's that cannabis? Car stinks of it. Um, are you allowed to just like run for his... Yeah, Section 23 at Misuse of Drugs Act. Things like grinders tends to give us grounds to believe, especially when there's a smell of recent use of it. So, yes, I am entitled to search through his car and I will be doing. After almost 25 years on the force, Andy knows the law and loves laying it down to would be legal eagles. But he just love it. Have you been smoking cannabis at all? No, but my, friend's, my friend is. It was earlier. Because you smell quite heavily of it. Sorry. Car stinks of cannabis. Yes. And there's a grinder in the dash. Yeah, have you got a drug wipe? I should have a drug wipe. Bob needs to check the driver out. You say you don't smoke it yourself? No, I, I, do, I do, but I haven't had any today. OK. All right, OK, just stick your tongue out for us, mate. Come forward a bit. The drug wipe can detect cannabis and cocaine in eight minutes, so the driver won't have to sweat for long. Because I'm going to search you, I have to make a record of that search. Part of that record is your clothing, so I'm making a note of your clothing. The car's going to miss as well, so if you want to, if you want to pop stuff behind you, that's fine, crack on, but we'll find it. Eli Dandy has clocked some shifty shenanigans in the back seat. The two lads seem to be trying to stash something. Next, jump out. Right, mate, if you just jump out of the way, we'll have a look where you've been sat. Oh, look, a little bit of white powder. Is that what you were stuffing down back at seat? Well, he wasn't looking for loose change. I told you I'd be looking down back at seat, because there's another little bit of white powder there. What, what have you found? Some white powder, yeah. Well, just so you know, mate, I'm a builder. Look, I've got concrete all over you me, were. so it could be that. So you've got concrete all over me. You can create in white bags. Oh, no. That looks like cocaine. No, you don't. No, you don't, do you? Good. I'm liking it. You really, you really are trying to look after your mate, aren't you? He can try all he likes, but unfortunately, the white comes back positive. It has come back positive though for a bit. Trace of cannabis, but also trace of cocaine as well. well I don't, I don't do anything like that. So right, I mean, it, like I say, it is a, a very best, but what, what, it, and it gives an indication that you've got some in your system. How positive is the line though? That's what I want to. Well, it, it doesn't matter whether it's faint or whatever. It can just say it's positive there. Okay. That it doesn't tell us anything about how much. I've just got to tell you, you're under arrest at the moment. You'll be taken to the uh, police station for the purpose of giving a blood test and then that'll be sent off and we'll wait for the results to come back, OK? OK. A blood test should settle the matter. 
You're walking because he's locked up. So he sends out. Ta ta. While the builder and his buddies sling their hook. There's only a little bit of cocaine. We'll never prove whose it is, but it's in his car, so he's got to answer for that. So, three delightful customers. Just having it, working lads, having a beer and a bit of a smoke and a bit of cocaine, like you do on a Friday night. Walking now. Oh dear. Oh dear indeed. Drug driving can carry a hefine, a 12 month ban, and a six month prison sentence. Uh, this is his blood sample. Uh, so we'll package this up. It's all in a, an envelope here. And that gets sent off to the forensic lab. So we'll see what's, uh, what his levels are and if he's over the specified drug limit. Results will be back in a few weeks. It's now a waiting game. He says he doesn't do it, he doesn't, he doesn't take it, but it's in his system for whatever reason. So um, we'll just wait and see a couple of weeks' time. It might be by osmosis. By being with his friends, it might have just like leached into him. Yeah, yeah, could have been. Yeah. Could have been. The suspect's bloods did come back positive, but when it got to court, the case was discontinued. Last year, cops in the UK recorded almost 600,000 domestic abuse related incidents with 75% of all victims reported to be women. Extra here, far, far, what more can tell them, they? Thank you. Interceptors Sophie Hawkswell and Chris Basto are blue lighting it to a residential address in Leeds, following reports of a serious domestic incident. The male there's threatened to um, knock any police officer out that comes through the Just door. Just sharp on ten and ask them how far their unit is off. A man has reportedly been behaving aggressively to his female partner and there are kids in the house. He's got previous for attacking cops and a firearms unit is all en route. Can we suggest a suitable RV point? Um, then we'll all go in together. Interceptors like Chris rarely get called to domestics, but he's taser trained, so could be useful backup if things go south. She was pointing to the right hand side. Someone's waiting for them outside the address. He's not getting out, he's been his fist and said, when you're walking, he's going to batter you on. What name like. is it? Yeah. Who else is in? Uh, my mum. The 18 year old lad says his mum and her boyfriend have been locked in a blazing row. And now he knows the cops are here, it's threatening to boil over. As expected, the man isn't cooperating. Stop. Got him. Yeah. But interceptors find strength in numbers, and the suspect is swiftly introduced to the cold, hard surface of the pavement. No, I want me. Oh. Is it going in your back here? There's a phone district phone. one on. No, I want me phone. Yes, yes. Text all you <laughs> to do me, yeah? Now get me phone. Thank you. Three minutes. That pocket's clear, that back one's clear. The, I can't get to the other side. They're all clear, I've got nothing on me. I want me phone. Now what is wrong with that? Why didn't you not sit up? The man's partner has his mobile. Yeah, I want me phone, mate. And for some reason, he really wants it back. So get off the sledge, right? Now get me my phone. Get off the bollocks and let me sit up, yeah? Your fourth foot officer is violent, you're not sitting up. Because of his aggression, cops detain the suspect while they get to the bottom of tonight's aggro. I know you want the phone of police. They started getting aggressive, put, clenching his fist, putting his fist up to my mum and my nose and stuff like that. So that's when I rank police. And they, they put it through as an emergency. Thank you. 
get down. I'm not going to get down. I will carry on if you don't let me put my head up. Just, just, let, me you go me, back. just let me put my head up. Right. Right. Meanwhile, Sophie's got a statement off the man's partner. We were just saying we've only detained him when we brought him out because he were kicking off. The Sophie says it's a sexual and assault. They'll just need locking on for it. Right, listen to me, pal. It's 139, you're under arrest. Section 39, common assault, all right? Right, OK, that's fine. But we'll sort that out when we get back to the thing, will we? He denies wrongdoing. But these are serious allegations, so he's off to the nick. It's a domestic violence incident. Um, there's been children in there, other adults. It's pretty important that we get here and we help our district colleagues um, and help victims of domestic violence. He was later found in possession of cocaine. He appeared in court charged with common assault and possession of a Class A drug. The assault charge was ultimately withdrawn and no further action was taken. He's fined £120 for possession of cocaine, plus £115 in costs. Still to come, locked and loaded for a late night alarm call. This is the end, please! And. I'll give you a clue. Bob. Benny Boy intercepts a hot date. You're driving like an idiot. If he'd have just driven off slowly, you wouldn't have got stopped. In West Yorkshire, armed defences have doubled in just four years. Oh, police! Firearms cops here are tasked with one mission. Got it. Get the guns off the streets. Turn around, turn around. Get your hands on your head. And bring those using them to justice. Oh, please, it's What do you need? Stay down. Stay down. We are seeing a big in, in, in the use of firearms at the moment, sort of criminally. There's been a particular flare-up in this area, in the Huddersfield area, between a couple of the gangs. We're obviously trying to, trying to get on top of these, but the big thing as well, the big thing tonight is we want to get them back. Tonight, a team of firearms cops are mobilising for an intelligence-led operation. The plan is to raid two pro looking for suspects thought to be connected to gun crime. Providing backup, dog handler Duncan Matthews. I've got police dog Tia with me tonight. She is a firearm support dog. Um, so when, when we get to the address, she goes in and makes sure it's safe for everybody else to go in afterwards. Duncan and Tia have taken part in dozens of armed raids, weeding out some of West Yorkshire's most dangerous criminals. About 30 seconds from the address, and so we've got to get to the address as quick as we can now, try and secure the suspect. The first suspect is wanted on suspicion of firing a weapon in public. Cops must tread carefully. Quiet. An intel suggests there could be multiple weapons in the house. Locked and loaded, the team prepare to make their move. Somebody up at 2 2. A silhouette in an upstairs window. He's very to speak to him. Can you go down to your front door? Yeah. He claims he's coming down, but they're taking no chances. This is where he's going to be put under control, just down in front of this vehicle here, just down there. Hands on your head, mate. Hands on your head. Walk slowly towards me. Stand me Don't make any sudden movements. Keep walking. Right, stop there. Turn around. Face away from me. Go down to your knees. In the crosshairs of multiple rifles, he's on his knees. Entry team confirmed. Subject is secure. And singing like a canary. It's just secure, Sue. Here, hopping with ice. He's um, a shotgun at top of steps. An air rifle, and downstairs in the kitchen is a um, Glock 19 replica airsoft. 
He's amassed quite an arsenal. But before retrieving it, cops need to be sure none of his mates are hiding in the house. Do we have uh, any communication with them? And there's another problem. His girlfriend is still in the address. Um, the girlfriend's in there and there's three children in there as well. Officers are going to go to the front to speak to her there and basically negotiate her to come out with the children. We need them out of the house before we can search it properly then, make sure there's nobody else in there hiding. After 10 minutes, the suspect's partner finally appears and she and the young kids are safely away. Oh, police! Anybody in the address? Make yourself known now! Police the dog! Get yourself! <laughs> Tia rushes in where armed men fear to tread. Right, she's gone back along the landing. I can see a shadow moving around on there. Come! Dog's safe, no indication. It's gone well. Tia's gone in. She's done what she needed to do. I'm fairly happy there's nobody else in now. Just made it that little bit safer for the firearms team to go in now. Occupants of the house, armed police. Show yourself now, please. Open door straight, Ed. Floor by floor, room by room, armed cops scour the family home. Right, clear, room clear out. Entry team to bronze, we're first aiding upstairs. They soon locate the imitation shotgun and air rifle the man told them about. Plus, something iffy that he conveniently failed to mention. Certainly with places like this, they've got cannabis grows in there, they're looking at protecting them. Whether that's why he's got that um, imitation weapon or not, I don't know. Had he come to the window or the door holding that, um, looking how real it is, I think it would have ended very differently to how it just has done now. The house will be placed on lockdown before being turned over the next day by specialist search teams. But for Duncan, Tia and the firearms unit, the night isn't over yet. X-ray Delta 6A, briefing received, no questions. Their next suspect has served time for GBH. Now he's wanted on suspicion of attempted murder. The intelligence that we have on the suspect is that he's potentially a lot higher threat than the previous one. Obviously, we deal with each threat on an individual basis. With the stakes high, there's no time to hang about. Oh, police! Oh, police! If no one answers, they'll have to force entry. Occupants! This is the armed police! Show yourself! Occupants! This is the armed police! Show yourself! Still no response. Two lights on. Someone's finally got the message. Show yourself! Several loaded guns are trained on the front door. Not the armed bad guy they were expecting. Who else is in? In the house? Yes. It's the suspect's mum. Apparently her son isn't home, but he's due back any minute. It's not ideal because but at the moment, he's not under our control. Well, we don't know whether he's got the weapon, so this is what we're just going to we're going to have to sort out now. Make sure as soon as he gets got control of him, and he can't change his mind and go somewhere else. Hold on, matey, hold on. Engine off on the car, please. Let me see your hands, chief. When you get out, keep your hands up for everybody. Come out to some seat, He's happy to cooperate, but this man is known to have a violent past. Please, what's the one thing? He's unarmed and the car's clean too. So where's the gun? Oh police, anybody in the address? Make yourself down! A quick search and still no weapon. But with two wanted men off the streets, Dunk satisfied with a job well done. We've got both suspects in custody. We, we've come out, we've done what we wanted to in the end. Um, that, that was the ultimate aim. Um, 
the ideal thing would be if we can find the weapon now that's been used, um, but ultimately we want to get the person in custody, but we've got to do it safely. Yeah, and tonight, um, and everyone's everyone's safe. So yeah, we're happy with that. No action was taken against the first suspect with regards to firing a weapon in public. He is, however, still under investigation for production of cannabis. The second suspect was released without charge. It's a quiet summer's evening, so interceptors Ben Pearson and Matt Ransom can't miss the sound of a hot hatch begging to get pulled. Let's have a look at this golf here. A white Golf GTI has burned it from the lights, leaving the Friday night traffic for dust. But Ben's no slouch from the lights and on it in seconds. Just the attitude that people have got, it's nine o'clock at night. Lights have just gone to green and lad in front think to uh, Grand Prix at Silverstone. Petrolhead Benny Boy is a big fan of high performance motors, but has little time for low performance drivers. And thinks he can just give it beans and everyone's got to accept that he can drive how he wants and do what he wants. So we'll just have a quick word with him. Very, very good stop. Oh, he just doesn't know we're here. The driver's got a heavy right foot but it doesn't look like he's trying to get away. It looks likely he's no idea there's a cop on his tail. You seen you. Ben will soon take care of that. Turn it off. Finally, the pennies dropped. What's your car keys? Is your car? I... No. Right. Jump out. Both the driver and his female passenger are dressed to impress, but it'll take more than a dicky bow to impress Benny Boy. <laughs> Do, lad. You can't. So, first of all, calm yourself down. Hi, Cam. Right. Who's his car? You don't want it? Yeah. Or oh, uh, has hired off someone? Hired off who? 007 says the GTI is hired from that well-known rental firm, a friend of a friend. Right, so how much did you hide it for? £150. For the night? Yeah, we'll Whoa, £150 for, for a night. It's a nice car. It's a nice car, yeah. And how are you insured? Insured? Yeah. He told me it's temporary insurance. No. Surprise, surprise, there's no paperwork to back up his claims. How old are you? 18. 18? Wow, 18 driving a Golf GTI. Benny boys heard enough. Right, listen, listen. You drag an idiot. Okay. Speed kills. Yeah, it does. Right, so what do you do at the bottom of Barkerham Road? I'll give you a clue. Bop, bop. So what do you do then? Do you want me to give you another clue? Bop. What do you do when you turn down bottom of Leeds Road? Bop. Then what do you do when you turn up back at Telegraph and Argus? Not acceptable. And you, you, them, them two people who are walking up here, when they drive like an idiot, doing 40. Yeah? It's a higher car, apparently. That's not a higher car. Oh, dear. Oh, me was higher. The dodgy hire is an all too familiar story for the interceptors. This is what we have all the time. And people like you, no disrespect, naive, do what someone tells them to do or says, yeah, take it and believe I'm insured. You're not. Have you got any proof of any insurance? Um, not on me. No. 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 Oh How long have you been driving for? Uh, I've been passed for nearly a year now. Do you know when you, in your first two years of driving, what happens if you get more than six points? You get your licence revoked. Yeah. So you have to pass your test again. Do you return to a, a prisoner licence holder? Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately for this lad, having no insurance will earn him the full half dozen, so it's bye-bye licence. Do you know what the Good biggest time. kick in the teeth is? If he'd have just driven off slowly, you wouldn't have got stopped. I didn't even see you. I know. Do you know why that is? Lack of experience. The golf and seized. How do you feel with his driving? Don't like India. And to make matters worse, this was no ordinary date. You know what it is? It's this day. Been looking forward to it for a long time. Right. What's going on? Is it a dance? 
It's like a... Have yeah. you finished school, haven't we? Is it prom? Yeah, it's like a prom. The young couple have just arrived at the hotel for their high school prom. Signature on that bit there. Where? Here. Yeah. Can you hold it? Lovely, thank you. I haven't got a signature, that's like a... You'll get one when you get older. <laughs> Not only is the lad losing his licence, he's missing the biggest social event of the year and now every school kid's nightmare. Hello. Hello. Are you teachers? Yeah. What's your... Oh, no teachers are here. Double trouble. Here you go. Time to face the music. If yeah. there's trouble inside, I'm telling you now, I'll make your life misery. Nothing to happen inside. So I just, can't say. just make sure, right. OK? Cinderella shall go to the ball, after all. Prince Charming was reported for no insurance, and because he could potentially receive six points, he may well lose his licence. I don't want to ruin his prom, but it has done. But he should have thought about that before he set off like an idiot from traffic lights. Oh, yeah. Positive result for shots, please. <laughs> Coming up... Well, Nature calls for Chris and Aidy. If I stand in dog turd, I will not be happy. Interceptors Chris Basto and Aidy Fickling have just kicked off the night shift and are already painting the town blue, hunting a wanted motor. There were a vehicle that made off from uh, a couple of lads over there, Suzuki Ignis, made off twice, and, and uh, it's been sighted again by district officers, Castleford area, so we're just making his way down into that area now. Hopefully it'll pop out again. The runaway's well known to the cops, but he's a slippery man, Houdini in a Suzuki. He failed to stop for me yesterday as well, so... Yeah, it's, it's personal. It would be. You can't personalise it. It's not personal. It's not personal. But it would be very nice to get them, because they failed to stop for Chris and our team as well a couple of days ago. Just give it the street where you were seen last. Eyes right, fellas. It's that, that's, that's it. it. Now Chris has him on the hook and, this time, refuses to let him wriggle free. Yeah, 6-1, uh, we're behind the Suzuki Ignis uh, vehicle failing to stop. Having been given the slip once on these roads, Chris reckons he knows Houdini's M.O. He should go to Fryston Woods, we need someone to Fryston Woods a bit. Somebody get to Fryston Woods ASAP, please. To lose a Suzuki once could be regarded as a misfortune. It's left, left, left onto Kendall Drive. To lose it twice would be carelessness. Stand by, we're still on the green, just hold on, it's going off-road, it's going off-road at the green Draws into the left. woods. The boys' Beamer 3 Series is no off-roader, but interceptors don't give up that easy. The thing is, he could just leave it parked in the woods. We'll go for a walk and see how far it is. I'm happy to run till I puke to get these. <laughs> if we find this car down here, I'll be chuffed. Occasionally, a walk in the woods can help focus the mind. Oh, it's quite it open, it? It turns left, because you could see it turn left. For some good old-fashioned detective work. There's like reflective lights on the floor. Yeah, I've seen that, as if they've been done on purpose. Yeah. It's been skidding as well, look at that. It's been skidding like mad. The signs are promising. How are we going to get out of here? I don't know. I'm not bothered about walking a few miles though. But the one that got away, they'll go the extra mile. Thing is, right, we've got to find a way back to the car. In full Blair Witch territory. Oh, don't go too far here, I can't see. Oh, I might get there's wolves around here. 15 minutes later, they spot something, and it's not Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, reflector up there. Yeah, it's there, look. Found it. Get in. Awesome. Bingo! The driver's ditched the Suzuki and disappeared, and he's taken the keys with him. The problem is, we're in the middle of woods. We'll get it out, mate. I've got a trick up my sleeve. Between the force, motorbike fanatic and advanced driver AD was a hotshot mechanic. If you want a motor gone in 60 seconds, AD's your man. We're just going to have to put our trust in AD, who's going to drive us back to our car. So that might be a bit dicey. But, yeah, very, very happy. It's uh, turned out to be a good little job. But they're not out of the woods just yet. Um, oh, he's doing it. <sighs> 
That one was knackered, didn't it? Oh mate, that nearly did it. I know, I got really excited. I thought we've done it and then, well, I just... I like to you give you the suspense of getting it achieved and then just let you down gently, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Story of my life. An A for effort, AD, but you're no Vin Diesel. 6-1, uh, we can't get it started, this car, so we're not going to be able to get it out. If we can organise recovery with a 4x4, because that's the only vehicle that's going to be accessible into these woods. The recovery van will be an hour, along to sit in the cold, dark woods, twiddling your thumbs. There's no way this car's going to go anywhere now, so we can walk back to the car, wait for it to recover, we can jump it four before and show him how to get here, car. Yeah, yeah. It's not the result we wanted, but we've got car. The main thing is we've got car. Exactly. I'm happy with that. And we're going to remember which way we're going, here. Yeah, we'll remember it. Yeah, we, should, we should have a ball of string, shouldn't we? <laughs> it's easy, Hansel. Just follow the trail of tyre tracks. They're going to come in the morning and... Uh, exactly. The little car's not going to be there, Have his key in hand. And always stick to the... F Straight down there, or did we come round? Or we came round that way, didn't we? I'm not sure. Lads? We're lost. It didn't come through there, it's too tight, It didn't come it? through there. Ah, right. I wonder if it's come this way. I'll just go see if there's any marks up here, hold on. In fact, it is... Oh, Christ. I think that fork down there, we should have gone right. I don't remember seeing that. I've no idea, Eddie. Really. Well, let's just wing it. This is turning out to be a shambles. Come out that one. This is not fun now. <laughs> I think it gets light about half four in the morning. By that time, we should be able to find his way out of woods. If I stand in dog turd, I will not be happy. We are walking the right way. Are we really? After an hour's rambling... I have no idea I've managed to cock that up so badly. ..they find the path to freedom. What's worrying, though, is the car's that far away. Have we over, overdone it by that much? <laughs> We've <laughs> shot it by about a kilometre, haven't we? <laughs> it's taken them so long to get out, the recovery van's already arrived. Super, we've just timed it right. Which means they've got to turn around and head straight back into the woods. <laughs> this is a funny shift. It's just like being at Serengeti, isn't it? All we need now is David Attenborough narrating this. To the left, you can see the lions. <laughs> there it is, it's a funny look. Hey! Wasn't that far away, was it? Since the car won't start, they've got to drag it out. We'll give it a try. We aren't bothered about any damage on there. If it rips me, I'll send it off because it gets stuck. We'll just torch it and leave it. Well, we won't torch it, we'll just leave it. We won't torch it. <laughs> right, this is going to be the ride of our lives. <laughs> this time, they've got fresh tyre marks to follow. So far, so good. Finding their way out should be a breeze. Eddie, is this where we should turn right? I don't know, because I didn't see it. I was too busy talking, but I don't remember this bit. Oh, bugger me. Lost again, and AD knows who's to blame. Vehicles, I think you'll still be looking for it. I've not um, at the moment. A wise man once said, it's not the destination, but the journey that counts. <laughs> he clearly never travelled with AD and Chris. There's one, look, there's one. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, get in there. Several hours after they first spotted the Suzuki, it's finally on its way to the pound. <laughs> Don't mess with us, Chris, because we'll drag your car out of anywhere. Probably one of the funniest shifts I've had in a long time, yeah. that. Romeo, 6-1. 6-1, we've finally got this motor out of woods. We're alive and well, and we'll get something to eat. Happy days, it is. On Monday at 9, Chris Tarrant takes the last train to Transylvania in search of the truth behind the story of Dracula in new extreme rail journeys. Dan Snow's edging ever closer to the truth next as a CT scan of Tutankhamun's skeleton reveals violent secrets new after the break. It's Tuesday night, and all is quiet, with one exception.
blazing towards Saltaire, district officers are after a stolen Vauxhall Astra with fake plates. And to coin a local phrase, it's going like the clappers. It's uh, currently uh, 70 miles an hour as we head towards Saltaire. Stand back. The good news is it's headed straight for interceptor Kev Shaw. Thanks for Romeo 3 zero. I'm in ship play. I'll go to that clone for your call one. Kev's a cop of consummate taste. He loves red wine, meat pies, and salt and vinegar crisps. And really hates car thieves. The scum. There's people working hard every day just to have some nice things. And then you get scumbags who then turn up and just see something nice in your driveway and think, we want that. It's fair to say that Kev's keen to the collars. Ah. And there they go. Yep, they've got one phone on the back. Out accelerating local cops, the interceptor takes the lead. Kev plans to catch up and box the car in. 3-0, that's me uh, requesting CPAP. What's up ahead? The driver's door pops. This guy abandoned ship, leaving it to stack straight into a parked hatchback. With the passenger door open, the Astra slams into a stationary car. Its fleeing passengers are a whisker away from getting crushed. Kev aims to cut the suspect off in the next street. Pulling alongside the running man, he blocks the pavement. But the lad's over to and off like a shot. Stop it! Out and running, out and running! Boston Street, white man, jogging top bottoms that added us in blue baseball cap. Kev's dropped his bat on. In the time it takes to retrieve it, he's lost him. Sorry, where are you? Jonathan Silverville, I don't know what... But the suspect what? breaks cover. Get up, man. Get down. Get down. Get your arm. Stop for you. Get me up! I'm going to get one Turn around on your brother. Give us your arm. Give us your arm. Stay Turn down. The, uh, the Stay down. Mm -hmm. Three zero, I've got the driver. Uh, unit to me, please. Kev suspects this is the driver. Yeah, come over, unit to exhibition mode, please. And as the cavalry rides in... Hey, up. Not so bad. Move on your side, fella. The one? atmosphere's altogether more convivial. Sit up. And when an off-duty officer jogs in to assist, it's a right old coppers reunion. Hi, Kev. Hey, mate, how you doing? All right. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Any more? Any more? You got any more? Well, you've got the driver. Shut up. Kev, any more? Not, uh, the, well, not the going down this way, they went a different way. All right, good. All right, see you later on. No worries. Chit-chat over. Can I stand up, Matt? No, he's sitting down. Lots it's back to the suspect. Two, three. Yeah. Two, oh. Romeo, three, zero. We've got a clarification on this vehicle. Who's playing dumb? I'll come and show us that Coffer, car. Coffer, it's like standing what car? from that like Bradford. I weren't chasing it. My colleagues were chasing it and you failed to stop. So, I've chased you. And caught you. Do arrest and special belt stop for police. And dangerous driving. And caution still stands. Do you understand? Ask the audience. Phone a friend. Do you understand? No, no. Well, you understand you're arrested, yes? Yeah, no. You understand why I've arrested you? Next to be two way till these shoes. Second time lucky. Dangerous for police and a stolen vehicle. Does that make it any clearer? I've tried to stop for police. I've been in the car and stopped for police, yeah. You're sorry? The car stopped for police. I ain't drove, I ain't very good. Right. He admits he was in the car, but claims he wasn't driving. Right, jump in. Either way, he's about to be a passenger in the back of the van, while Kev assesses the damage. Oh, great, I'm knackered now. To his phone and himself. I'm nearly 42 year old, and uh, as uh, Danny Glover said in Lethal Weapon, I'm too old for this. Uh, <laughs> but the old eyes have still got it. He's trying to claim that he's the passenger. I'll have to, I've seen him get out from the driver's side and then I followed him down this road here where I tried to head him off. He's made me run. How dare he? And uh, then I dropped my baton and uh, luckily he stopped for a breath himself hiding behind a parked car. And uh, I've got him. It's happy days. One to me. <laughs>
Luckily, Kev won't have to rely on his eyes to see who is driving. I'll have to just show you from video if he has got out from a uh, driver's seat. I won't know that until he uploads and I have a look at it. The video can be viewed back at the station. Bradford Nick, here we come. Ah, oh, sh... Or maybe not. Have we got to look for the keys? Yes. Right. Right. I'm just looking for my key fob because it's fallen off my key. <laughs> oh, yeah, Bob. Shrewd detective work pays off. And I've got my key, yes. <laughs> if I hadn't found this, I'd have had to buy buns for a shift, so <laughs> it saved me some money. Bradford Nick. Here we come. A great car. I bet you forgot to press record, didn't you? <laughs> Thank you. With the comedy short out of the way, it's time for the main feature. Is that a turn? It's an action movie with a sting in the tail for its leading man, who exits stage right from the driver's seat. He's driver. Yeah, Mappy is driver. So there was a per person who got out of the passenger uh, of the rear public passenger seat, but he was definitely driver. The lad leaping from a moving car was found guilty of theft of a vehicle driving whilst disqualified and driving without insurance. He was disqualified for a further 19 months and sentenced to 15 months at Her Majesty's pleasure. You're currently disqualified. Coming up... You told me to go forth and multiply several occasions. Claire gets an earful... You've been detained? You've been detained for... What, you got me sat here for? Bullshit on my phone. An interceptor sandwich on the M62. Uh, so it's that car there. Yep, yeah, seen it. And Sherlock Spenner's on the case. Sure, it's it's a VW. The UK is suffering an attack of the clones, with villains copying legit number plates onto similar cars for its... No. Incidents of cloned cars on the UK's roads have almost doubled since last year. Ambulance. Ambulance. Ambulance now, please. Nick Priestley is making his way to the motorway. The dodgy most straying onto their patch. So we've had a, uh, an hit on the, uh, on the motorway, coming into our area, um, on an old Volvo, it's a 55 plate Volvo. Very brief details at the moment, it's been involved in theft from vehicles. Um, but there's no keeper with it and it's insured to um, the northeast. Um, so it's a good chance it could be a, uh, a clone vehicle, this. With 23 years service, this veteran cop has aspirations to test himself with a marathon and the Ironman Challenge. But tonight, it's a team effort. How many uh, X5 have we got down here? You've got uh, two, maybe, I guess. The plan is to box the Volvo in a T-Pack manoeuvre. Nick prepares his troops. So, to confirm, Fliss, you're going to the front with your follow. Uh, James, you'll go to offside and I'll go to the rear. And uh, Ben, see if you act as uh, unofficial safety. Yeah, the safety will be um, very poor then. With the Volvo approaching, the two X5s take the lead and creep up the slip road. It's uh, one up, it's not fast up. They have the motor in their sights. Uh, so, it's that car there. Yeah, you've seen it. It's time to tea pack. The suspect has nowhere to go and doesn't put up a fight. The dodgy meat in an interceptor sandwich. Just come over, stop. Volvo drivers are known for their courtesy, but this one's missed the memo. Cunning disguise. He's quickly in cuffs. Can you get out? And popped into a colleague's car. 
Come on, don't follow me like that. What do you think it is? What's your name, mate? Liam Jagger. Liam Jagger? Yeah. Is it your car, Liam Jagger? No, it's not. Right, have you got a driving licence, Liam Jagger? No, I'm banned. You're banned, all right, me, Liam Jagger. No way, we'll sort it out. While Nick deals with the clone mobile, Liam is taken to local services for further cleaning. It seems he's a banned driver who's been taken off the road thanks to some tasty TPAC work. From a tactics point of view, um, I won't say it with textbook because no whatever it is. However, we made the decision for him and I think he quite rightly realised that I aren't going anywhere and he, and he pulled in and sort of pretty much says, right, enough's enough. Nick arrives at the services where Claire Gray and Dan Pennington have the suspect in hand. Disqualified until the 1st of August 2020, and then after that you'd have to take a test. So, you, yeah, you're currently disqualified. It turns out the lad has recently been released from prison for dangerous driving after he failed to stop earlier in the year. No deviation. Stop back. That pursuit lasted 25 minutes, over 10 miles. Back in the direction uh, where he originally came from. Involved the suspect driving three loops round a housing estate at 60 miles an hour. No deviation. Stand by and it's a right, right, right. And only ended when the police used a stinger to stop the car, eventually dragging the suspect out. Stop, stop, stop. He got 10 months for that offence, but was released early. He's currently wearing a tag and on a curfew. How long are you on curfew for? Um, I've just been doing it last week. Was that um, an early release from prison then and put no, on your curfew? No, I've already had that one. I've already completed that. This is for um, uh, not going to community service. Breach of it, breach of my order, innit? Tagging is meant to encourage good behaviour, but it doesn't seem to be working for this lad. Have you changed the plates on the car or did you get it with them plates on? I bought the car, how the car is now. I don't know nothing about no plates. Right, OK. Because the number plate are not the true identity of the car. That's not my problem. Right. Well. As they continue to question the suspect, Nick inspects the handiwork. It's actually... It's knackered, but it's, it looks all right and you probably won't think of stopping it. Uh, had it not been for cameras that's identified that it's a cloned car, probably wouldn't look twice. And that is your pool car. A pool car is shared between criminals to commit less than legal shenanigans. Very little cost, uh, easy to run, easy to maintain because it's pretty much free, no insurance, no licence. The Kentucky kid. Meanwhile, the cloned kid, like a lot of millennials, seems to be having some separation anxiety with his mobile phone. Hi. On my phone? Not at the minute. Well, if I'm not under arrest, why not? Because you might be under arrest in a minute. We're just doing some uh, inquiries. Sure, so until I'm under arrest, I'm allowed my phone, obviously. Right. Well, not at the minute, no, because well, you're not detained. Under arrest, yeah. Don't make, don't make it, do you know what I mean? I'm not running off nowhere. I want my phone. You just stop playing on your phone. I can't play on my phone. Who's on that I'm playing on? Play a TV program with old fat ball bastards, wouldn't it? Grow up. It doesn't seem that the kid is a fan of the interceptors, but he does want to brag about his big boy driving skills. Look at Small cough, man, you know, all your lives. Well, there we go, then. That's exactly why we stopped you, that we did. I didn't. You're lucky I didn't. Right, well, there's no luck. There's no, there's no luck. You're still being me all shit and you're still being a dickhead. There's no, there's there's no dickhead. luck in it. Well, I'm not under arrest, why am I going to be in cuffs and I've not got my phone, I want to make yeah, a call. Because you've been detained. Yeah. Been detained for what? You've got me yeah. sat here for bullshit on my what? phone. Claire does her best to reason with him. You're a disqualified driver, you just... So why am I under arrest? Why haven't I got my phone? You're in a car. Until you've arrested me until I'm under arrest. Why haven't the f*** you given me my phone? Well, I've tried to answer you, but I'll you won't I've tried listen. to answer you, but I want my phone. I'm not under arrest. Why do you need my phone? Interceptors have to deal with this level of abuse on a daily basis. It's water off a duck's back. You told me to go forth and multiply several occasions. Didn't take kindly to being interviewed, I don't think, about the matter. Probably because he knows he's banged to rights and he shouldn't be driving. It's a good job that we stopped him in the manner that we did, because um, he's, he's recently been disqualified for dangerous driving, so I don't think he'd think twice about failing to stop for the police. Another idiot off our roads. The cloned kid packed belongings. 
How big are them boats? Like Mary Poppins' handbag. Yeah. Ain't got a lampshade in there, have you? The Bobos. Both he and the car are off the road, but Nick isn't convinced for how long. I have to say that I'm absolutely over moaning about getting him off the road, uh, but he will be one of Bradford's finest drivers that will never stop driving. Um, he will never, ever be legal, that lad. He's just one of our everyday customers. But this offence of driving while disqualified and without insurance, and his previous offence, he got a total of months behind bars. He was further disqualified from driving for 17 months. The world of TV is littered with famous crime-fighting partnerships. Holmes and Watson, Mulder and Scully, and, of course, West Yorkshire's very own Spedder and Kev. They're responding to an incident in the northeast of the city centre. There's been a report from them to the public that they've seen a car crash into a parked car. They then heard some people arguing, I think someone's been heard to say, come on, let's go, or something like that. Which has got all the hallmarks this time on the Friday night that he's going to be a drunk driver. Um, it's only really scant information, so we're trying to get it down there as quick as we can um, to, see if, to see if we can find it. When Spenner isn't working, he likes to unwind by watching crime drama. His favourite film is The Equaliser, and his top fictional detective is Tosh Lines from The Bill. And he's got his own mystery to solve tonight, the case of the trashed Toyota. Yeah, we're not going at a minute. I'll just look at you on your way up there. Um, but we'll see you later. See you, Richard. The hatchback has been collided in by another car, but the suspect has scarpered. It was, it was Cav, is it, then? Oh, it's Mike. Is it yours? Just come up. Right. Oh, oh, sorry. Incidents of drivers leaving the scene of a collision have increased by 45% over the last four years. This crash has a witness, the car owner's neighbour who called the cops. What car is it what's drove off? It was a white car, it drove off up the road and it was smoking like a good one. But it will take more than a bit of smoke to hide from this interduo. I think the main thing we can do is just go try and see if we can find another car for you. I don't think it's going to be difficult to find it because there's going to be a car that's absolutely wrecked. If it's caused that much damage to the back of yours. And the suspect has left behind a vital clue. I think that's off the front of that car as well. Is it? It ain't off that car. It's of their car. Detective Spenner, an expert in cars, takes a closer look at the clues. W. Boom. They're after a white VW with a big dent. But well, we'll see if we can go find this car, all right? They're one step closer to bringing some justice to the innocent owner of the Toyota. Oh, lad. I'm a... Yeah, I, I have to feel sorry for that guy, bless him. He's minding his own business, part of car, side his house, law-abiding citizen, and then some, someone's just smashed into the back of his car and obviously just, just done one. Spenner senses the suspect car will be nearby. It's going to be damaged, so I don't think it's going to be too far away. Our best bet now is to have a look around this estate. I can't see it's gone very far. And there's a white VW up ahead. Trashed. That's it. That's it, that, yeah. <laughs> this may not be the car that they're looking for. Then again, that's a pretty big clue. Blue paint on a mangled wing. Five or we've found the involved. But it's far from case closed. We may never find out who was driving it, but there's, there's a ways and means in the process now that, that, that we can fold to do our best to at least help this poor, poor lad out who's had his car destroyed. He Being a betting man will say that she's driving it, she's drunk, she's crashed it, thought, oh no. So she's dumped it, she's run away to try, avoid any repercussions. Spam suspect, the registered owner. There are no leads on her location, so it's back to the scene of the crime to break the news about the car. The car's just, just down there. It's been abandoned, yeah. I don't fully know who's driving it yet, but I'm going to give you, going to give you all the details your insurance company will need, all right? Insurance claims such as these are an inconvenience. However, the victim is philosophical. 
just going to call insurance and go from there, but I just said it's not a pair, it's someone out there who's been hit. You know, it's that's better for that type of thing. Upside, it shouldn't cost you anything because, as I say, this, this car's all insured. I've got all the details you'll need. Oh, that's fantastic, thank you. So that's a massive bonus for you. And there's another potential bonus in the case. The neighbours discovered that the crash has been caught on CCTV. Because my neighbour over the road, she said they were last driving. It's a serious smash, and it looks like they've got the right car. The car went up. But it's impossible to get an ID on the driver. Kev and Spenner do have the registered address of their prime suspect, and with the insurance sorted, they're off to pay her a visit. See you in a bit. And we're going to serve with some paperwork now that means she, because the car's registered to her, it's her, her responsibility to tell us who's driving it. If she doesn't do that, then she will be prosecuted with failing to furnish those details. So we're going to go knock on the door, we'll go, and if she's not there, we'll serve that paperwork. You feel for him, don't you? So it'd be nice to get this guy some, some sort of justice. There's someone home. Who is it? Will it be the suspect driver? Then, yeah. She don't live here, look. What's happened? I'm a mum. She's crashed a car and walked off. You joke? No. I'm just going to post this through because the car is registered to this address. Yeah. I'm going to post this through. It's for her to get in touch with me as soon as possible. Right. Unfortunately, they were unable to prove that she was driving the car and so the case was dropped at court. Thankfully, the victim's insurance paid out and they got a new car. Coming up... I've got eyes on her. She is waiting in the last window now. A drink driver at the drive through And she's moving out of the roundabout now. She's taken the first heading out. And a Kentucky Fried litter bug gets his mate's car seized. Look at this guy from some people. I, don't, I haven't even seen him. Right, but we have, so we've stopped here. Blood, they're trying to get onto me because you dashed it in, apparently. Blood. Drink drivers continue to cause havoc on West Yorkshire's. That far as expected, you failed that. And the worst offenders? <laughs> Come on. Oh, my Jesus, Lord, how pissed are you? Um, Young's under the age of 30. Oh, get, 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 get. Give me your arm, give me your arm! Stop resisting. Just south of Bradford, interceptors are after a suspected boozed up must. Uh, we'll be taking Lee 102. We are now ground commander. Request to see back authority. No deviation. He's weaving more than Muhammad Ali as he tries to throw them with a dummy left. But the interceptors aren't going to be fooled. The runaway focus approaches a red light and the lead police car spots an opportunity to get in front. But he's just nudged out. And so a right, right, right onto Bartley Road. Bartley Road, you know the traffic. The streets might be quiet, but he's being reckless. Going through reds at the crossroads, it's no deviation, speed is 40 miles an hour. Despite the low speed, his driving is high risk as he again weaves on the wrong side of the road. Uh, Approaching some uh, red traffic lights. And runs yet another red. Stand by, stand by, and it's through. Luckily, there are very few people about. Though this cat is now down to eight lives. The runaway pulls another move from the drink driver handbook. Wrong way down a one way. And it's a straight across, no entry. But he can't shake them. He's back on the wrong side of the road. Up some cobbles. Oh, stick over cobbles. Yes, yes, you can do. Over the speed bumps. 
but his efforts to escape are in vain. And after a seven minute pursuit, he's on the ropes. He's given up, he's given up. Albeit with a tidy handbrake finish. Speaking of which, let's see those hands, son. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop, stop. No damage to the pain. He's nicked and blows 83 at the roadside over twice the legal limit. The driver was convicted of aggravated vehicle taking, driving under the influence of alcohol and without insurance. He was eight months imprisonment and was disqualified for three years and four months. Over in Wakefield, Duncan Matthews is responding to reports of another drink driver, this time at a drive through Dunk pulls up nearby while staff turn fast food into slow food until the cavalry arrives. Trying to delay her, but said that she's at the third window waiting for food. Uh, they're trying to hold her there as long as possible. Extra Delta 6 8 I'm come in, I'm parked up there now, I've got eyes on her, she is waiting at the last window now. Staff have been trying to delay her, um, keep at the window, they think she's been drinking. Um, so we're just trying to get a couple of units into the area now, um, wait for her to move off, and once she moves off we can try and stop her. This bungee jumping white water rafting copper is fond of a curry, but the suspect seems to prefer a burger. And dinner is served. And she's moving off. I'm just parked up near the Costa, uh, just watching her move up. Uh, she's moving off to the roundabout now. She's taken the first, heading out towards the 650. Duncan is waiting for a backup before pulling her over. On approach to the roundabout, at it, and we've got a near side indication. Taking the first, taking the first, it's the A61 going out towards Leeds. Speed, 3-0. A local unit has now arrived. And it's time to ruin this driver's happy meal. A marked unit blocks her escape route at the front while Dunk slams the back door. It's a stop, 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 Leeds Road. These are a couple of dinner guests the driver wasn't expecting. Another officer has the driver in hand and quickly has a confession. Can we go to drink? Yeah. 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 Whoa, she's in. While the driver prepares for a breath test, Duncan deals with the passenger. He's done nothing wrong and is keen to get home. Just stay in the vehicle. It's for your safety. You're on the main road at the, way, at the moment as well. No, I'm, I'm getting. Just stay where you are for a second. No, I'm getting. Until out. we can establish everything out. that's gone on. And out. You're on what? the main road. You've had a lot to drink. Okay. I'm just asking you to stay yeah, there for I'm your get... safety at the I'm moment. I'm getting out. The man is becoming agitated, and Duncan is concerned for his well-being. Okay. As soon as we've checked you out and everything's in order, if everything is in order, then you can go on your way. You know how I want to get out of the car. Yeah. Just two seconds. Just while we check you yeah. out. So, can I get out? Excuse me. Just two seconds. Two seconds. Can, can, no, no, stop, stop forcing me back in. Before the situation escalates, his details come in. 120, thanks very much. Right, the details will come back. I'm happy to you say who you are. Right. Thank you, so, so Thank you very much. For... Checking people's information is normal procedure, but the man isn't best pleased about being delayed. We're just, happy. We're just checking that you were who you said you were. Okay. No, I am. And I we told didn't know you that. that. We didn't know that. Not everybody tells us the truth, funnily enough. Some okay? people might be wanted to see. This is what and we this is what we have to establish, okay? So you're a joke, mate. Right. Well, I'm happy that you are who you say you are now, so thanks very much for your time. The man takes his box of Stella and hits the road, as the driver has blown 97. That's almost three times the legal limit, which means she's off to the nick to blow on the evidential breath test machine. But the passenger won't go gently into the night. You like this sort of stuff? Doing, doing this? 
The main thing is there's a drink driver off the road. But it's been a tricky encounter for Dunk. It's quite often the fact that we have to deal with other people who are trying to interfere as opposed to just dealing with the person that, you know, we want to, the suspect, um, and he just makes it more and more, more awkward for us. She's gone to the cell, she's going to be in there for the night. We won't release her until she's blown under the legal limit because we can't risk it, she might not drive again. The girl was disqualified for 20 months and fined £249. But further action was taken against the passenger. Interceptors often work in pairs, and when you find the right partner, it's a marriage made in heaven. How long have we been together for? Well, we were at district together. So, four years, pretty much worked together. Yeah. Which Had a month apart. Pretty cool. Hard work. I know. We're nearly brockers, didn't it? <laughs> it did, it tested us. Chris H is fond of a kebab and the camaraderie with his colleagues and he's more than happy to be sat next to his namesake tonight. It's good, though, isn't it? It's nice. We worked well at District together, when right? we got results, and really lucky to have the same team on road to places as well. Chris B is partial to a prawn cocktail crisp and a minty aero, but you'll never find him dropping his empty wrappers on the street unlike the passenger in the Ford Focus in front. As we were going, I was learning to watch traffic lights, this car's just stood and turned off, and um, passengers just lobbed um, juice thing from KFC, I think it was. Littering is an offence that can get you a £150 fine. Not only that, it's rude. I thought it was going then. Time to clean up the streets. Hello, Mate. car. Yeah, he is. Clog and pull me. Because, first of all, we can do, if we want to do, we can check yeah. any documents on any car that we want to do, but yeah. your mate threw some art at car onto the floor, some rubbish. Ooh, so, so, him. Yeah. So it drew attention to us, that's why. Throwing rubbish from a car is almost asking to be pulled over, and once stopped, an interceptor is duty-bound to check all is in order. Have you got your driving licence? I've got no driving licence, mate. I've just passed my test recently. How recently? Recently, like two, two, three weeks ago. Jump in back of our car and we'll do some checks in there. Come round here. While Chris H deals with the aggrieved driver. Who is? Look, I just up on me. You know what I mean? I got pulled um, today, actually. Just take a seat back there. Chris B lays down the law to the little out. Just don't dump your rubbish on the street, all right. all right? We saw, I think it's like a KFC cup or something like that. Just put it in bin and then takes a look at the car. Well, that's not good. The rear tyre is deflated, which could be three points on the driver's brand new licence. But he's more worried about the innocent of being pulled for his mate's littering. Look at this guy from some people. I, don't, I haven't even seen him. Right, but we have, so we've stopped here. So we can stop any... any right? Do you know what I mean? I don't understand. Because you're... Right? Because yeah. I, what am I going to do? Run next to the car and have a chat with him? Well, don't be stupid. Let me speak to him then, innit? We have. We told him. Let me speak to him then, innit? Why are you getting annoyed because you've been stopped? You've got to remember, you've just, just passed your test, yeah? Blood, they're trying to get on to me because you dashed it in, apparently. Blood. What are friends for? Are we listening or what? Well, what kind of no, shit no, no, listen. If we don't what listen, you're going to get a ticket. Trying to harass, man. The poor harassed driver isn't impressing the Chris's. But yeah, look, officer, yeah, obviously, I don't know what I've done wrong, yeah, obviously. Yeah. I've just been trying to explain it to you, but you've got interest in speaking to your mate out there. Obviously, I'm just telling uh, you. And playing up in front of the camera. Anyways, ain't you? You're going to speak to him anyways, innit? So I might as well... I've already spoken to him. What do you think, Chris? Take your time, Chris. Have a good think. That's what I think. <laughs> oh, lover. Officer... The vehicle's not taxed. The vehicle's not taxed? No. Nope. No. It's not... Sure it's not... That? But Yeah, we just checked. It's not been taxed since July. It's not being taxed. No, that can't be right. Oh, yes, it can. And brace yourself, Mr Grumpy. So, because that's two months and a day out of tax, mm. the DVLA want us to seize cars and take them off the road. Are you being serious? I'm being 100% serious. Ah, uh, you can't do office. Well, we can't. 
and we are. What if my listen? Because the car was meant to be taxed, yeah. The car sorted. Yeah, yeah, but you've not even checked it because you don't know because you're a new driver. That's what you've told me. It's estimated around two percent of the licensed vehicles on UK roads don't have tax. That's over seven hundred thousand. The DVLA will want you to pay a deposit pay towards tax in the car, and then you can go get it back tomorrow morning. While the lad's car is being seized, they let him off the points for the time. But he's still feeling hard done by. I feel like you lot are just, I don't know, just trying to get onto me, yeah? Listen, listen, listen. No, listen, listen, because we're going down the wrong route now. If I were going to get onto you, I'd do your three points for tyre. So I think just doing you for the tax offence is being pretty lenient, don't you? That shut him up, which concludes our business for this evening. No, you can get out. We're done. Good. Some people deal with people differently. I tend to like to see how people are going to speak to me to start with. You know, as a new driver, he should have been sat there, head in his hands, thinking, what have I done here? You know, I'm stupid, but he, he wasn't really like that. Boy. He was just, it was the attitude of, I've got my mates in car, why do you say? I'm going to play up, and it's, well, ultimately, you've walked home now. The car is recovered. Nice one, see you later. And Team Chris performs one last public service further down the road. There's a bin right there. How hard was that? No further action was taken against the little out, but the driver was reported for no tax and his vehicle was seized. Still to come. A death trap on wheels, one careless owner, dodgy MOT. How does that drive? Can't wait to get out. Today's cars are safer than ever. This this airbag here has been deployed from the roof. That's probably what saved his life, to be fair. But only if things like airbags, handbrakes, pulled it up another four ratchets there, and suspension Sorry. are in good repair. And Claire and Nick are after a hatchback that's anything but. I mean, it's been written off. Um, and unrepaired particularly well. The car, 150 mile per hour of R, was inspected three weeks ago and deemed a death trap. The vehicle had no airbags in it, um, it had hundreds of on it, um, and the engine they thought was stolen but we couldn't prove it. So in essence we had to give it back. However, the DVSA prohibited it with a PG9. A PG9 forbids a car going on the road until it passes a new MOT. Loads of work needed doing to it. But miraculously, 24 hours after the owner got his death trap back, the Vehicle Operating Services Agency reports that it passed MOT with flying colours. There were a lot of work required on this car uh, for it to pass an MOT, so for it to be done in that time, to get the parts, to get the, the work done and to pass an MOT, um, it's, it's not true. Nick suspects a bent garage issued the MOT for cash without seeing the vehicle. You can just hand him over to us and... Yeah. Uh, and while Claire deals with the driver... Get in, take a seat, it's in front of you. Oh, that's fine. But... Jump in, then I can just pull in this space, I'm not blocking out road. He inspects the freshly MOT Golf to see if it really is roadworthy. Uh, it, it, it's as we were, you know, this... These seat belts aren't working. Airbag lights. So they've changed the tyres. So it's uh, it's not past its MOT as it should have done. It's a wreck, but the driver isn't getting nicked. We're not looking at offences for this um, particular person. Uh, it's about getting this car off the road. It's an accident waiting to happen, this car. Um, so it's a good job tonight that we've got it off the roads again. Nick drives the accident waiting to happen to the police recovery garage, carefully. Nick's a mechanic, basically, <laughs> so it'll be good drive it so he can see what it feels like. And Because when Bobo drove it the other week, he said it felt like the front of the car were attached to the car. For anyone not mechanically minded, that isn't good. It was insurance write-off. They've obviously bought it and put it back together with like a jigsaw puzzle from cars. How does that drive? Can't wait. 
Inside, they go to work these mechanics. That's the MOP there, that. It's all this had one. She had one That's an MOP there, excessively leaking. It's not, not. Look at this. That's a failure. Yeah, there's no airbags in it. That's a failure. I know. I suppose it's a, a different element to our job. It's not just about, you know, catching criminals doing burglaries or whatever, it's about making roads safer. And it's the making the roads safer not having this on it tonight. That's for sure. Claire breaks out the list of faults from the last time it was inspected. Brake pad excessively worn offside axle two. That's literally metal to that. Yeah. So that's not been fixed. Both back brake pads are literally metal on metal. You've no brake pads on your on the back, so you're not gonna stop. Airbag obviously missing when fitted. Seat belt retraction mechanism doesn't release. We know that that's still not right. Wheel stood missing. One total for that wheel near side axle two. So that's you at back on that side. Shocking. This is one of the worst cars they've ever seen pass an MOT. Missing. It's got no wheel. <laughs> if it wasn't that dangerous, I'd be has laughing. That, has that been done? Wheel nuts are missing on three out of four wheels. You've got bolts missing out of your wheel that secure your wheel to your car. So why would you want to drive around when you haven't got your wheel secured to your car properly? The MOT was done yesterday. I don't think this car's been in the garage. I think it's a phone call. OK, mate, there you go. And these 100 quid on the way to you. It shouldn't be on the road. It's not fit to be on the road. I drove it. It's not safe to be on the road. The owner of the knackered Golf awaits his day in court. The dodgy garage is now under investigation by the DVSA and the mechanic who issued the MOT has been struck off. The Interceptors are back new next Wednesday at 8. A new type of mobile security is patrolling our streets. Meet the bouncers working 24-7 new Monday at 10. And tonight, illegal clothing and drug dealers are under surveillance as the police raids team come knocking in court by surprise. New next. <laughs>